So we're watching Piers Morgan uh, defend Andrew Tate. See, what was supposed to happen was that I was supposed to have two other videos with timers over here that go down, and then I would upload them from 24, but it looked like I wasn't recording. So if I'm checking, you see, you know why. Let's see why. Piers Morgan invited two women on his show to debate whether Andrew Tate was a misogynist or not, and I gotta say, this woman in particular was pretty full of So Piers Morgan rightfully defended Andrew Tate in this video, which was pretty epic to see, but nonetheless, if you enjoy these videos, be sure to drop a like and subscribe, and yeah, let's get it. Well, joining me now is Talk TV contributor Esther Kraku and a trembling broadcaster and journalist, <laughs> Jenny Kleeman. <laughs> Visibly recoiling in horror. Let's start oh. with you, Jenny. Oh. Um, he's, he's not your idea of a role model. Well, no, he's not. I, I, th I see him as a symptom of a problem rather than a solution to it. I can understand why. What's the problem that he's the, the symptom of? The for? problem is, I think, a lot of young men uh, feel that nobody is speaking up for them. Mm. In a culture where we are encouraged to have identity politics, the only identity that isn't a good identity is a young man or a mm. young white male. He talks in a very straight way uh, and he gives straight answers to uh, some questions, which I think he, he gives very wrong answers to. Um, but I find him repellent. I think he, he talks about... He talk, he, basically creates straw men that he destroys. So he will um, depict feminism as a particular kind of thing, a kind of man-hating thing, which it isn't. Well, it is um, for some feminists. For a small number of feminists, yeah, I mean, I so there say. are some radical feminists who genuinely there, there hate men. There definitely are. There definitely there are. are. But most people know that feminism is about just thinking that everyone should have equal opportunities, regardless of... Yeah, of, and of one what thing we say. know from Afghanistan, and these, these heartbreaking scenes yeah. today in Afghanistan of weeping female students who couldn't go to university and men actually in Afghanistan then going out in protest for them. What's it? Oh, the university ban, Taliban ban women from attending the poll. Heart-rending scenes, Esther, here, of these, these young women in Afghanistan, weeping because they've been told they cannot now continue their education. And then you've got male students walking out in protest. Very brave thing to yeah. do. A bit like we saw in Iran with the men protesting in support of the women being oppressed there. This is where he slightly lost me last yeah. night, Andrew Tate. There are, there are a lot of things he says which I understand why young men, you feel a bit lost, why they gravitate yeah. to his confidence. He's very good at building business. He's proven... He's made himself extremely rich doing it. A lot of what he says about masculinity and stuff, I, I completely would sign up to, actually. Yeah. And his confidence can help people. But when he was yeah. not prepared to condemn These the Taliban barbarians. for that, yeah. because that, to me, is an open and shut case. If you don't condemn it, then I'm afraid you've got a problem. And it's yeah. not about sending feminists in to go to war. It's ridiculous. As I pointed out to you... Which I actually of... do think is a valid point. <laughs> well, well it's, it's fine, but a lot of women do actually fight in the armed forces. Yeah, so I think, the I idea think, that I none of them his... do is, is also nonsense. I think he was using that to kind of attack the more extreme form of I didn't see what he said about this. That says, you know, women can do anything. And if they showed it, I might have missed it. using that as an example. Yeah. But people I do think, you know, you lose people... And bothering me about some dumb shit that I don't really care about. 10th century barbarians like this. But I don't think... When he said it has nothing to do with him, I think he's not willing to get into dicey territory in that way. But it's like you speak in such absolute terms. Why do you think not? he's a misogynist? I don't think he's a misogynist. No, I don't think so. I mean, a misogynist means somebody who hates women. Yeah, I, I don't, don't think, think he hates, hates women. I do I think, think he hates women. I think he thinks think women he are nothing. I think he would not want, know what to do with you and I, Esther, because he does not know how to deal. He gives interviews to people like you or to Hugo Griffin. He'll give interviews to yeah, men. Yeah, but a lot of women I've spoken to about. Yeah, but a lot of women. But he's done interviews with women. I've seen them before on YouTube. And he's very polite and respectful. Yeah, women do. A lot of women do like him. Exactly. There are a lot of women who don't. Don't know him who seem yeah. to hate him, yeah. ironically. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure it's as clear I mean, cut I, as the, he's I a misogynist. I, I don't think he's a misogynist, and I have a brother who's probably within his target demographic, mm. 23, and I can understand why his message would resonate with him because mm. it's normal. I can understand it's, why and the it's normal, would exactly, for I young just... men to feel like they don't have a place in Western society, and he actually makes that point. I just think when you don't want to outright condemn. 10th century barbarians like the Taliban, mm. you tend to lose your case with more moderate people. But again, we're not his target audience. The fact that his, why, his, you know, his understanding about what's happening in Afghanistan is that, that it's a feminist issue rather than mm. a human I issue. I don't think he yeah. said that. Well, no, he did. He said, send this feminist in. It's a human issue where we made all these promises to people in Afghanistan and then we left. Well, let's be clear. Let's be clear. We it. betrayed those women. We exactly. absolutely right? betrayed Joe, Biden. Joe as a Biden, human being. In the way we pulled out of Afghanistan overnight, 
and we betray not we, only people who work with us, the interpreters and yeah. so on, but, people but we who have died let millions, for millions of Afghan women yeah. have just been tossed back to these barbaric walls. And servicemen who, who, who died for it. But the fact that, that he sees it, he says, oh, it's got nothing to do with me. As a human being, it yeah. should have something to do with it. As someone who says he's a no, I agree. Great, it should I have thought he was a cop out there. But albeit, mm -hmm. again, a lot of what he says, I could imagine if I was a young man, it would resonate with me, yeah. probably for the right reasons. I think he's trying to give people confidence and a belief that being masculine is not actually a stick to beat thing. you with, Absolutely. right? You can be a good masculine person. He used to be applauded. Um, let's talk of somebody who I, I don't think is a shining example mm -hmm. of this. Joe Lysett, who that? has spent the last month posturing away with his shiny moral halo about David Beckham. Proud protest, but he was pro he has performed in Qatar himself. Okay, hold on. Uh, I don't know who this is, so I want to look him up. Joe Oh, yeah. Do like this. Oh, yeah. Who is this? Oh, is this dude? Yeah, I've never seen him once. Like, I see him a bunch of comedy shit. I've never seen him once. He's never popped up on my shit once. Being in Qatar, I'm representing the Qataris in the World Cup and being paid for it. Um, and then the sun. Uh, revealed yesterday a rather uncomfortable truth, which is that he had actually performed himself yeah. in Qatar, Abu Dhabi, and Dubai in 2015, a series of stand up. But that was a long ass time for ago. money, Esther. Uh, that was a long time ago. It's not like he did it when he protested for the stuff, right? And who wouldn't want to be part of the World Cup? It's a one in a lifetime chance that comes every four years, and you might not get the chance the next four years. So, World Cup thing, once in a lifetime, I could see why he did that. The, the, the performing there, that was like 2015. What is that? Seven years ago now? Seven, about to be eight years ago now. So it was, did we pull out then? I don't think we did, right? I think we were still there. There's so. a word for this, and I call it hypocrisy. Well, this is the thing. It's, I it's hypocrisy don't know that. I don't know all of that. So just take my words like. He wouldn't actually go to Qatar on, and sit on Qatari state television and say all these things. He can sit back comfortably and rage at the... But his whole point was David <laughs> Beckham record, shouldn't record. be there and shouldn't be fronting anything for the Qataris when this guy himself has taken it. And his, his excuse was so mealy-mouthed, yeah. Jenny. Oops, I've been caught by the sun. Well, yes, I did two gigs in Doha. Actually, it was three gigs in Dubai, Abu Dhabi and Qatar. I kept it secret by writing about it in my own book. Well, none of, no one remembers that from seven years ago. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I was paid a few hundred quid, not keen to say exactly how much, not by Qatar, but by UK comedy promoters who were being paid, paid by, by Qatar. Qatar yeah. uh, but it was 2015 when yeah. Qatar's laws were exactly the same about homosexuality I mean, as they are today. And that went a lot further back then. And so he goes on. I mean, he says, oh, no, but who should I take moral lectures from? Not from the sun. OK, what about her? It's not about the sun here. It's, it's about, about Joe Lysett's hypocrisy. I think it doesn't look good for Joe Lysett, but I would say that they're different things. The World Cup is about giving soft power on the global stage. So to is stand up comedians no, who are. Well, hang on. He was like nothing in So are gay comedians going to a country which they profess to hate because it exactly. bans homosexuality? I, they are, they're, by going there, they are basically saying. I'm Did he say he hated it back in 2016 or before that? Because if he didn't, then I don't see. To course me, his point, Morgan's point, I couldn't say his name for whatever reason. But yeah, I couldn't get his point on it. If he said it in 2015 before he went and then he went and I would be like, okay, that makes sense. But if he's saying that now, I don't I can see that. I'm pocketing think... the money. It's the same argument he used against Beckham. I think with Beckham, it's to do with being an ambassador on the global stage for a country that is trying to elevate their profile. Joe, Li Joe Lysett in 2015, if I, said to you, I don't it's think the old, It's the old thing of Churchill. Was it Churchill and Bessie Braddock when he said he was drunk one night? He said, Madam, would you sleep with me for a million pounds? And she said, would you sleep with me for a, uh, a million pounds? And she went, well, I don't know, Winston. And he said, uh, well, would you sleep with me for a pound? No, don't be outrageous. Well, look, we already established. Yeah, exactly. What kind of woman do you think I am? We know what kind of woman you are. We're, we're haggling over the price, right? No, it was a joke. I think but my <laughs> point about Joe Lysett is he seems to be saying, I only take a few hundred. No, Beckham took a few, I, I, a few I think million. You have to be What's the difference? I think you have to be careful about doing this kind of archaeology about what people have done really quite far in the past. No, no, it was seven years ago yeah, when exactly. it was illegal to be gay in Qatar. It's been he illegal knew to that. be gay there. He knew that. I, uh, illegal to be gay in thing, Dubai, I think and it was illegal to be gay you, in the UAE. Once you sanction this kind of stuff, you're 
sanctioned. It's fair game for anybody. Like all of those sports people who wear it, it's established that when they were 18, so 10 years ago. No, this stuff not buying out. it. Yeah. Rank hypocrite. Yeah. Don't want to see any more Joe license moral halo. Thanks. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, but ready to start eating my healthier. My point still stands. Like, if I don't know, those are his points. Middle class white women saying what young men should think and watch. Good on to you, folks. Those things they said about feminism were proven by the video of a man walking out. When it comes right down to it, it took a man to defend feminism. The woman cried while the men put themselves at risk. Now they barely know the how it is like it or not. It takes men to defend feminism. We don't like exposing ourselves to risk, but we deal with it. It's naturally forged in our genetics. We understand our role is dangerous and we just get on with it. Hmm. That is crazy though. Would women have walked out if it was the other way around? Probably not, but how would that work? I don't know. I couldn't see it being being the other way around. But yeah, either way, like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts on this, and see you guys later. Hope you have a good day or night, and bye. And by the time you see this, I might be passed out. So yeah, leave a like. And follow my Twitch, please.